core belief, type 8, coaching a type 8, core belief, the world is a harsh place where you have to be strong and powerful. If you're weak, they'll take advantage of you. So you've got to be strong. Secondary belief that showed up in this session, if you're weak, you'll be betrayed. Perceptual bias that's on top of that. My attention goes towards, unconsciously, who's going to be betray me. My core wounding is reinforced over time. So I'm unconsciously looking for who's going to betray me. Story. I set myself up for a bigger, bigger betrayal. So these are words that we heard out of her mouth. Okay, so we, we got this whole piece here. We got the lineup, right? So what are the distinctions that emerged in this coaching session? Because our distinctions are supposed to impact these things. So the first one, um, Donna asks, where were you when he was hiding his text messages? We're starting to look to give her some distinction for what's happening inside of her that's it wrapped up in all this. Second distinction. Um, she starts to describe who is the guy who doesn't play this game. What's the language? And Donna says, I want to hear you say it. First, there was a lot of trying, and then Donna said it, and Jessica was like, yeah, that guy. <laughs> and Donna says, I want to hear you say it. I want to hear you feel it. Okay, so we're starting to new distinctions that are disrupting this old pattern. Feel it from here. I want deep intimacy. I want a family legacy. Okay, this flies in the face of this whole betrayal story. Donna asks, how would we recognize him? So we're looking for new distinctions. The ones that are worthy. I don't know how to recognize him. This is a total blind spot for me. Ah. Okay, you got some information. It's kind of like the guy who is sitting watching TV with you. Right? So we're kind of gearing it so that we can get at to these distinctions. What was the cool part about watching TV with this guy? Okay, so this is new language. This is out of the betrayal world into who is this guy who's not going to betray you? So all these new distinctions on what he is, how does it feel to be with him, and then we catch on to, oh, I am receptive when I'm around him. New distinctions. I'm, I'm receptive and I'm around him. Okay, so what's the practice area that's going to embed these new distinctions into this person? Well, the practice area is go practice being receptive with your friends. Do it again, again, and again. Why do we do it again and again and again? Because it's hard to hold on to distinctions in your blind spot. It's easy to lose this feeling of being receptive. So we give the practice area. Let's do it over and over and over so we can disrupt the, the story and the assumptions and the perceptual biases. This might even start to impact the secondary belief because I get the visceral feeling of what is it like to be receptive and to have somebody come in and give to me. With me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the hope is that as we start to impact these things, we'll get new behaviors. The perceptual bias will shift. We'll start looking for who is it that I feel receptive around instead of who is it that's going to betray me, 
Who is it that I feel receptive around? Ah, there it is. So I move towards that. So my behavior shifts because the perceptual bias has shifted. The story is I get to be with somebody who shows up and allows me to have a family, who shows up and allows me to leave a legacy, who shows up and doesn't betray me. They make me feel good. They voice, they actively voice, I want to be with you. So we're looking for new pieces here that create this new behavior so we get new results. Mm -hmm.